Hey guys, so big news. NASA says the James Webb Space Telescope will be launching next year, 30th March 2021. So let's see if they can do it. Now, how did we get from finding directions using stars to sending telescopes in space to study them? We will find out in this episode. With our eyes alone, we can see many awesome things. And when it comes to doing things which are very far away, like the moon, the planets, or the stars, our eyes do their best by adjusting their focus to infinity, and that's how we see things. But that's not it, and that's when binoculars came into scene. And sailors use them all the time to find their way. Hence, Lippershey went one step ahead and invented the very first telescope, using two lenses in a way which gave better resolution than the binoculars of their era. And then our very own Galileo Galilei made the use of telescope more popular by using it to see the celestial bodies in the night sky. And that's how he became the father of observational astronomy. A simple way to understand how a telescope works is to see them as light collecting buckets. Bigger buckets will collect more light and will give us better views. Even a few centimeter increase in the diameter of the lens, the collecting area will increase by square of the number. Now, one thing to note here is that telescopes are not used to magnify things. They are used to collect more light and so faint things appear more clearly and images appear to be magnified as a result to a certain extent. But the purpose of the telescope is not to magnify things, rather to see faint things more clearly. A refractor telescope works on the principle of refraction. Refraction is bending of light from when traveling from one medium to the next medium. Right? So whenever light enters into a convex lens, it bends and converges to Similar light when it enters into a concave lens, it diverges. This is, our, right? this is how the refraction works. I'll remove the front cap of this telescope and show you this. You can see this is the front lens, the odd one is the objective lens of the refractor telescope. So, this is why it is known as refractor because it is a convex lens, right? Then it light collects light from here, focuses over here, right? And this is the focal point and another. Lens is used, the eyepiece lens over here, to give a view to And this is the focus. To move it in and out to get a focus. This is how it works. What I'd like to suffer from is an effect called dramatic aberration. In this, a rainbow of color is produced around the image. And that's only seen in the case of a lens, as it refracts the light among different wavelengths. Plus, it's hard to make giant lens and they need a lot of structures to support themselves. So, if lens is a problem, why don't we simply use something else? Maybe like a mirror? Yeah, and that's one thing we thought of too. And came up with a Newtonian telescope for... A reflector telescope works on the principle of reflection. Reflection means bouncing back. When light strikes a mirror, also it bounces. It strikes and it converges a single point. And that point is known as focal So concave mirror, telescopes using concave mirror as the collecting agent, light collecting agent is a reflector telescope. So if you can see there's a mirror at the back, you see, but that mirror is not a plain mirror, but it's a, it's not a plain mirror, it's a concave mirror, right? So light comes from the front, from the celestial object, enters over here, hits at the back, after hitting the back, it converges a single point over here, somewhere over here, that is the focal point. And then it has another plane mirror. Can you see this? This is nothing but the secondary mirror. The primary mirror is what? The concave mirror. And this over here, central part you can see, this has another plane mirror at the back side. It bounces the light 90 degrees over here and gives us the view over here. So, See, this is the eyepiece again, the same eyepiece that we use in the refractor telescope. Eyepiece always DJ. So, this is the refract reflector telescope, okay, which uh, reflects the light coming from the celestial objects and converts a single point using on cave. The images that we see are inverted, but that's not a worry as there is no up and down in space. And as you may be guessing, there's no chromatic aberration seen in reflecting telescopes as mirror reflect the light at equal angles. Plus, there are just so many types of reflecting telescopes such as Cassegarian, Jobsonian, etc. 
Now, liquid mirror telescope is an exciting model. In India, we have the ILMT with 4 meter diameter and it is so economical. In India, we also have the 3.6 meter Devasar optical telescope, which is the biggest optical telescope in Asia. And if you compare the cost, the 4 meter one actually costs less. So that's technology. If you explore outside Asia, you will find many big telescopes. The record holder currently is Telescopio Canarius, which is a 10.4 meter telescope made of 36 small mirrors placed in hexagonal shape. Then we have the large binocular telescope, whose light gathering capacity outperforms everyone else in the game, 11.8 meters. These giant masterpieces take half a decade or more to build and uh, use technology such as adaptive optics, which is as complex as rocket science. And that's cool on its own, but we cannot go on like this forever. Why? Because all the ground-based telescopes suffer from atmospheric refraction, phenomenon responsible for twinkling of the stars. And if you want to observe the stars without the twinkle, we have to go in the space. Now, what do we find here? Well, there are already a bunch of telescopes in orbit. The most famous one being the Hubble Space Telescope. And if you don't know about it, you should check it out because it's just so cool. It uses a 2.4 meter primary mirror and it gives better resolution than any ground-based observatory because there is no atmospheric refraction. But sadly, space telescopes cost billions of dollars when we make them on the Earth and launch them and operate them from here. So our only option is ground-based observatories and we're making bigger buckets. Now, one thing to say here is that even the guys who constructed the, uh, the pyramids of Giza, even they will be wondering, like, what are these guys doing? And that makes me wonder, what if we did not have any telescope? The Galileo pointed telescope inspired changed us a uh, view of the universe completely. We saw craters on the moon, we saw Venus shows us phases, we saw planet Mars, we saw that uh, Saturn has rings. You know, we saw so many things. So it has changed our way we look at the universe. And we're using universe to find answers to our uh, beginning. So that for that we need some kind of some kind of instrumentation. And the only thing that comes from the universe is light. Light is the only thing that is going to answer all our questions. That's the major part that we want to understand. And if I want to understand the universe, then I need light capsule units. So those are the telescopes. These are the light capsule units. They bring light, focus it, and we try to see it and find answers. Everything. You know, to light, we can do spectroscopy. To light, we can do we can see the change in brightness of the object, so we can comment. So everything can be calculated, we can calculate distance. So we can say things slowly and slowly, we are coming towards and finding answers. It's very vast, it's very vast. But our journey would be still more difficult if we didn't have these kind of devices to tell the answers of the universe. So, did you guys like the video? What was the first thing you saw from a telescope? Let me know in the comments. Also, I want to thank Mr. Neeraj, Head of Space Chennai, for helping me in this video. Till next time, happy stargazing.